Welcome to our section, a practical real-world example of text classification, and in fact, this section could really be titled Three Real-World Examples because we're going to present three completely different applications to give you some practice. We'll start off this section by introducing one of the simplest and most widely used classification families, the Naive Bayes Classifiers. Next, we'll cover an example demonstrating how text data can be used to determine information about authorship, like for instance, the age or the gender of the author. And for our final example, we'll talk about document classification, and we'll build a classifier that figures out which words are related to movie reviews being classified as positive or negative. So let's get started with our first topic, Naive Bayes Text Classification. In this video, we're going to introduce Naive Bayes Classifiers. We'll discuss why it's one of the most commonly used classifiers in natural language processing. And finally, we'll walk through an example to demonstrate how we can identify useful features and use them to build a Naive Bayes Classifier. Okay, so what is a Naive Bayes Classifier, and why would you want to use it for natural language processing? First of all, Naive Bayes classification isn't a single algorithm. It's actually a group of algorithms with the same underlying principle. Specifically, they assign class labels to problem samples, and the individual features that make up the problem are strongly independent. A Naive Bayes classifier will predict the probability of class K given a set of predictors X. Here we can see the formal description for a Naive Bayes classifier. We commonly use Naive Bayes classifiers because they can be trained efficiently and scale well to large datasets. And one of the major advantages over more complex nonlinear classifiers is that the Naive Bayes classifiers can be trained well with a smaller number of training samples. Let's get started and open a Jupyter Notebook by launching the command prompt and typing Jupyter Notebook and pressing Enter. And now we'll just go to New, Python 3, and open our new Jupyter Notebook. The first step when creating a classifier is figuring out which features are relevant to the classification task, and then encoding them to create a feature set. In Python, we can create functions that return a dictionary for each feature we wish to include. These dictionaries are the feature sets, and they're used to map feature names to their values. For example, let's say we're using a classifier to determine the gender of a person who authored a text. We might start by looking at the author's name because there's a strong correlation between a person's gender and their name. But how would we train a classifier to understand what names are male versus female? Are there features associated with names that help to give us clues? As we'll find out, the answer is yes. It turns out there are several clues that can help us differentiate whether a name is likely to indicate a male or a female. Let's start with the last letter of the name. It turns out that this can help us give an idea. Names ending in A, E, and I are likely to be female, while names ending in K, O, R, S, and T are likely to be male. We can create a feature that captures the last letter of the name using a function. This function will take a name as its argument and return a dictionary mapping the feature with its value, in this case, the name with the name's final letter. Let's define it like this. Here we can see that we've made a function called gender features that takes an argument called word and it will return a dictionary with what we're calling last letter and return the last letter of the word. Let's pass a name into this function to see the output. We can see the expected output, a dictionary containing the feature and the value, or the last letter and the letter E. Now that we've defined a feature extraction function, we need a list of examples to work with. Fortunately for us, in LTK includes a names corpus. Let's import it and use it to create a list of labeled names. We can do that by typing the following, from nltk.corpus import names, and then we'll create a tuple called labeled names, For labeled names, this will give us a list of tuples containing all of the name gender pairs for the entire names dataset. Now let's shuffle them up by typing import random and then random.shuffle and we'll pass in as an argument the labeled names variable. 
Now we'll create a list of feature sets using the feature extractor that we created earlier. We can do that by typing the following. And now we'll divide our feature sets into a training set and a test set. We can do that by typing the following. And finally, we'll define our na naive Bayes classifier and train it with the training set we just created. We'll do that by typing import in LTK, and then we'll create our classifier variable and set that equal to in LTK dot naive Bayes classifier dot train, and we'll pass in the train set as an argument. Now that we've trained our naive Bayes classifier, let's test it out and see how it works. We can do that for the name David by typing classifier dot classify, and then we'll pass in as an argument the gender features function with David passed into it. We can see here that the classifier has properly classified the name David as male. Let's try it for another name, this time Michelle. And we can see that it's properly classified the name Michelle as female. We can also see how well our classifier performs on the entire data set by typing print with parentheses nltk.classify.accuracy and then parentheses again with inside of it classifier, comma, test set. The output tells us that our simple classifier guessed correctly over 75% of the time. Not too bad for a classifier with only one feature. In practice, you'll want to consider more features in order to improve the classification performance. You should now understand the basic features of the naive Bayes classifier and why it's so popular. We also learned how easy it is to create features using NLTK. That wraps up our introduction to naive Bayes text classification 